Hello everybody, I am just Lance and this is like the fourth or fifth time I've tried to do this video. I have been having technical difficulties up the wazoo. Um, went ahead and did this video, did not like the way it came out. I missed some things that I wanted to cover so it was like nope. Um, went ahead and tried doing it again just a bit ago and my phone went ahead and shut off in the middle of the video first time it ever happened um did not like that so tried it again my girlfriend she came home my guide dog herbie started barking when he heard the van so i had to go ahead and i had to go silent him down silence him came in my girlfriend had to come in here and one moment somebody is calling me I'm trying to record a video, man. It's been, f yeah, it's been screwed up on me. It's like the third, fourth, fifth time. Anyways, I'll call you back. Late. I'm not going to edit that out. But anyways, yeah, so yeah, I've been having some really rough time with this video, but we'll see if this one sticks. Anyhow, so welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm just Lance. Anyhow, today, this is So You Want to Be a Wet Shaver, Part 4, Soaps and Brushes. Anyways, that was my friend Christian at Victorville. Anyhow, um, I, I give him a hard time sometimes. I know, I know. Um, but you know what? He's He's been my friend for 10 years now, so... Um, anyhow, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at soaps. First two soaps I'm going to show you all are samples. This is Phoenix Shaving. This is their Crown King formula by Douglas Smythe. Absol absolutely beautiful scent. It's called Red Planet. Beautiful, beautiful scent. That's, a, that's their samples. And it comes pretty full. It's a relatively... Hard soap. Relatively hard soap. The next one is this. This is K-Shave Works. Bumble Nuts. I like Bumble Nuts. They're good. It's a really good soap. Um, K-Shave Works. You cannot go wrong. All you got to do is pick a scent that you like. And it's great soap. Now, I want to explain something to y'all. If you're new to this, and you see something like this and you say how am I going to lather in this when I'm used to lathering in this simple get yourself a lather bowl or a scuttle which we'll cover in another video get a lather bowl or scuttle a bowl out of your kitchen coffee mug, soup mug, whatever Scoop out however much you want. If you want, scoop the whole damn thing out and press it into the bottom of that. Go ahead, lather, and then just, you know, just rinse real quick. If it's a relatively hard soap, rinse it. A relatively firm soap, rinse it. Put it away until you need it again. Um, because you're not going to be able to get that much of a load off of one of those little tins I went ahead when I first got into this. I tried that and I was like, oh man, this is a pain in the butt. Never thought about going ahead until I saw Douglas Smythe trip ticking tip trick hack and hack video where he said, yeah, and I was like, oh man, that's so simple. Why didn't I think of that? Anyhow, so first and so those and another great option. Well, these samples are a great option if you have like a travel lather bowl or a travel scuttle, like the Crown King um, travel scuttle, which is pretty, pretty darn durable. It's made out of polypropylene, so it's not going to break. Um, I eventually want to get one for when I travel. But if you travel a bit and you don't want to go ahead and scoop out soaps and put in there, instead of going ahead and sticking a whole tub of soap in your travel bag or in your dot bag, this, this is an old speed stick container, travel speed stick, and I shredded some Vanderhagen Deluxe and pressed it down in it, and just pressed it down, and went ahead and even 
just popped it in the microwave because it's glycerin based soap for like five seconds just long enough to get it warm to where it kind of compressed down and if you do melt do that don't heat it for more you know for very long at a time five ten seconds a shot until the soap is melted down into the bowl container or whatever because you don't want to go ahead and you don't want to scorch the essential oils or buy what's called a soap stick or a shave stick um, basically the same thing and you can buy them where they come in a plastic container and if they don't come in a plastic container you can buy plastic containers let's go shaving shave nation shave nation.com um, yeah, let's go shaving.com. And it's just an empty container where you push 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 a, a soap stick down into like Arco, Derby, whatever. And then you just throw it in your bag and the way you do it, and I've heard a tip, drill holes, two holes in the top of your travel site shave stick, which I'm gonna do to this one. But if you can't see what I'm doing, if you're blind like me and you can't see what I'm doing. You just take and you go ahead, of course the top is off, the top is on, but you just get your face wet and then get the, get the, you know, dip the soap into the water or just run it under the faucet real quick and just rub up and down on your cheeks, rub up and down on your neck, rub up and down underneath your bottom lip and then across your top lip a couple of times. And then just take your brush after it's been prepped and just start working up the lather and it will go ahead and the soap that's on your face it will explode into a nice lather anyways so that's travel options now if you're new to this and you want something that's easy to lather get a cream now before I go any farther with soaps and creams if anybody ever says oh don't buy that buy this and they're trying to tell you to buy a really high-end soap or cream and there are soaps such as Martin de Condre. 60 bucks a tub it's triple mill it's gonna last you a while and we'll get into a little of that here in a minute but it's triple milled um, it's gonna last you a long time but does it give you a better shave than say a 13 14 15 dollar tub of soap no but it's gonna last you longer um, is a cream such as Taylor Wolf Bond Street sandalwood or Tobbs sandalwood I've got quite a bit left absolutely beautiful cologne scent I hear St. James of London is a little better um, but is a $75 tub of Aqua de Parma cream going to give you a better shave than a $14 to $17, depending on where you shop, tub of Tobbs sandalwood? No. Um, but if you want to spend that kind of money on your soaps and creams, go for it. It's your hobby. Anyhow. So, you don't need to spend a lot and the soaps, you don't need to spend a high amount of money on your soaps because, you know what, all these soaps give me a great shave that I'm going to show you. Anyway, so let's move on. The next soap I'm going to show you is made by Captain's Choice. This one looks like that. It's about $17 a tub. The scent is almonds and cherries. I believe it's based off of Cella out of Italy, and it's called 45th Parallel. Gotta get in there smell. It smells like a good cherry pie. <clears throat> My girlfriend says, cherry pie with, with whipped cream, but to us it smells like a good cherry pie. If it wasn't soap, I'd probably have a spoon, and I would have ate it, ate it a long time ago. Another one. is this this is sterling soaps which by the way the aqua de parma sterling soaps makes one called piacenza which from everything i've heard by people who's used both piacenza and aqua de parma 
Piacenza is close to or is a dead ringer, depending on who you speak to as far as scent. And that's this one, And that, but this is Sterling's Sharp Dressed Man. Oh, I love the scent. It's based off of um, Creed Aventus. As you can see, not a lot taken out. I've had this one a while. 5.3 ounces, $13 and something cents at sterling.com. Now, if you're a vegan, you're not going to want it because it is got tallow in it, which is an uh, animal byproduct. Next one I want to show you is from the UK. And I won this on a uh, fellow YouTuber's channel. He had a giveaway. It's called Wickham's 1812 La Blue. This or 1912, I can't remember, but Wickham's Le Bleu. This is a vegetable-based soap, so it's good for vegans. And I actually thought it was a tallow base with the poche fill and everything. To me, tallow performs a little better, but that's just me. Beautiful, beautiful soap. And you used to be able to buy Wickham in the States. Then they stopped carrying it in the States, and you had to order it from Wickham.co there in the UK. Um... Then you had to go ahead and, uh, or then westcoastshaving.com, they brought it back. So they carry Wickham's. I don't know if they still carry the Le Bleu because this was a limited run. And then I don't know if they're permanently making it, but they went ahead when they brought it over to West Coast Shaving. He redid Le Bleu. So the next soap is one of my favorite scents, and it's K Shave Works Hump Day. The scent notes on this, I do know, bright orange, grapefruit, pineapple, vanilla, cassock, whatever that is. Great soap, $17 for six ounces. As you can see, got quite a bit. A couple of samples have been taken out. Wonderful, wonderful soap. The next soap I'm going to show you. Oh, that's my sharp dress man. Pardon me, guys. This one, it is in my vintage Old Spice mug. It is a barbershop scent. It is a beautiful barbershop scent, and it is fine, classic American blend. It is a triple milled soap. I'm pressing as hard as I can. No dents. That's the only soap that I can do that to. Captain's Choice, um, really soft soap. I get best, best uh, results out of it when I put in a lather bowl or a scuttle. And I use a synthetic brush. But that's triple milled soap. Basically, triple milled is where it's run through a machine that compresses the soap two, three times. Um, single milled is just done once. When they compress the soap, what it does is it forces all, it presses all the water out, it presses water out of it, making the soap denser. But that's triple milled. And the final soap I'm going to show you is what a lot of people would call a Franken soap. So this one, it's in Z Pepino, Razor Rock Z Pepino, which Razor Rock, if you are budget minded, you can get great soaps for as low as two, three bucks. Big complaint some people have with, with Razor Rock is a lot of the scents aren't that strong. And the scents will range all over the spectrum with Razor Rock. Um, but this one ain't bad. I took Z Pepino, which it had, was mostly gone. Had the ring of death as you can see there's dents in it from my finger but took scoop that out mixed it in with some hump day mixed it in with some barrister man bay rum which is a bay and clove scent and it's kind of a spicy scent um, put a little bit of the uh, the the um sterling uh, piacenza and a couple of other soaps and it came out with a really nice scent and that's a good way if you got soaps left over or you're getting low you know to the bottom of the soap of several soaps and you say you know what just sit there and just experiment and add some scents together and make your own soap um soap scent anyhow so that's soaps let's see how much time is on here you're gonna hear my phone talk zero fifteen calling zero stop recording video a little over gotcha. 15 minutes okay so um, but I just wanted to kind of show you that might have been a little long for uh, a few of you, but I just want to show you 
kind of a range of scents. There are also tobacco scents. There are Captain's Choice North, which has, it kind of smells like a pine forest. Um, there are sweet scents. There are bitter scents. There are earthy scents. There are fruity scents, citrusy scents. There are sweet chocolatey scents. There are cologne scents. There are perfuming scents there for, you know, scents that are tailored towards women, scents that are tailored towards men. Um, there are neutral scents, which is just basically no fragrance at it. So if you sit there and you do have a job where you can't wear cologne because of allergies, or you can't wear scents because of allergies, or, or just you have allergies to a lot of scents, then, you know, you can get, you can get unscented soaps. So that's, that's soaps. And um, like I said, different bases, prices range from like two, three bucks to a hundred bucks, depending on what you go after. So let's move on to brushes. First brushes, there are basically four types of brushes, five actually. There are boar hair, horse hair, badger hair, synthetic, custom, oh, I forgot, almost forgot one, and mixed hair. Mixed hair, I have no mixed hairs. Mixed hairs, you know, it's basically two types of hair, like badger hair and boar hair, or boar hair and horse hair. Um, there are a couple of different types of knots out there. There are bulb shape, which when you look at it, when it's dry, it looks like a bulb, um, like a light bulb. Um, they're fan shape. When you look at it, it's fanned out. Um, so, and then there are hybrids where they're kind of flat up top. Um, there are custom brushes. Basically, you tell a brush artisan what you want the handle to look like, or what you want, what what kind of wood you want it to look like, or what colors you want in it, um, and what kind of knot. And then they make it, and then they, you know, they send it to you. Uh, custom brushes. Sometimes it takes a while to get them, um, but a lot of them, out, some of the custom brushes out there are so worth it. And prices range. Anywhere from five bucks for a decent boar hair brush, four or five. I've heard as high as eight hundred bucks for a badger brush. Um, badger brushes have multiple grades of hair: finest badger, best badger, pure badger, black badger, high mountain white badger, silver tip badger. Um, and just you know, and not all silver tips are created equal, or not all finest or create equal. So that's badger. So anyways, let's move on. Let's look at first we'll take a look at a couple of boar brushes. The first boar brush and the most I've seen a boar brush is 80 bucks and that was just a boar knot stuck inside a Thater handle. Basically you have two components of a brush. You have your handle this is my, from what I understand, it's a Vanderhagen. This was given to me by my girlfriend. She don't remember if it was one of her stepdad's or her mom's boyfriend's. Um, her mom's passed on, so she can't ask. But nice little handle, short, flat on the bottom, like all brushes. It has a couple little rings in, in it, or little lines in it. And then you have your knot which is basically the hair or fibers coming out of the handle. Now, knot sizes vary. I've seen as small as 18 millimeters up to 75 millimeters. And that one was made by a custom brush maker that, I don't know, he just wanted to make it, I guess. But it was absolutely huge. And they measure the knot where the hairs are tied together at the base. And then they go in. And then you have your hair sticking out. And brushes will do what's called blooming, which is where they kind of fan out. And boar hair is kind of scratchy or scritchy, as some say. And But the advantages to them, they've got great backbone. As you can see, it's not laying over that far. So, and, um, so they're great for harder soaps. But boar hair will split and go ahead and the tips will split as it breaks in and it will get softer. And some say they can sometimes be as soft as a badger brush. The next brush I'm going to show you is this one. This is an Omega 10066. They are very popular. 
And as you can see, not a lot of, no rail rods, so it's got good backbone. It's got this little collar ring around the collar here, or where the block comes out. And the tips, they're almost broken. I need to use it more, but they're getting there. And this is the, called their faux ivory handle. And if you find one and you're going to pay 20 bucks for it, that's too much. You can normally get them right around 10 bucks. And all you got to do if you want to find one, just do. Type in Omega 10066 and you will find all sorts of links to it. Anyways, so that's Boars. Um, and like I said, prices range, range. Um, the most I'll go on a boar is 80 bucks or 60 bucks for a smoke smoke owners club which is they use the best quality boar hair they got and then they put in a, a beautiful cherry wood handle and they only make a long, limited number for the year um, nice thing about boar hair brushes is the animal goes to slaughter the hide is taken for leather the meat is taken for food and the hair is taken for your um, for brushes now they're now with horsehair brushes, I don't have any, so I can't show you any. But a tip about horsehair brushes: go ahead and after using them a few times, comb them out. If not, they'll kind of get you know tangle up, and it'll look like they, it has like it's dreadlocks. And then you're gonna have a hell of a time combing it out, or you're just gonna have to throw it out. <clears throat> so if you get a horsehair brush, remember that. And those prices, yeah, you know, 20, 30 bucks for boar hair, for horse hair. Now, let's take a look at badgers. Oh, and horse hair, if you're not, if you're worried about animal cruelty, um, they go ahead and basically, and if, you know, and if you don't want to use something where the animal was sacrificed in any way, um, which, you know, I respect that, but horse hair brushes, they basically trim the tail and then they trim the mane the horse lives on and then they take that hair and they go ahead and they make brushes so now let's take a look at badger brushes um, badger brushes are explain oh with omegas remember if you see one where it says 24 millimeter knot it's actually a 22 because omega measures the size of the knot at the hole that they go ahead and insert it into because a knot a hole on a brush handle has got to be two millimeters bigger than the knot in order for it to go in easy enough to where they ain't got to fight with it, I guess. But okay, so the first one, this is 20 something, 30 something bucks. This is a Razor Rock over on Italian Barber. Two band finest badger, as you can see, doesn't lay down a lot. Um, great for face lathering. As you can see, it's two band because it's dark here and lighter up here. And this is called their barber handle. Solid acrylic, says Razor Rock down here. Solid acrylic, got your ridge up here. At the top then a glue bump then two ridges and then it curves in and then the handles kind of knobby I really like these barber style handles I got another brush with that type handle a synthetic the other, next one I want to show you is what's called a high mountain white um, it's this one I won this on a fellow youtubers channel when he was active um, and this is whip dog 24 millimeter high mountain white knot as you can see it's a bulb shaped knot in the tall amber handle which is kind of translucent and it's not fancy it doesn't say whip dog anywhere it doesn't have it doesn't say anywhere on the brush actually and it just kind of flares out here for the knot to go in then it kind of curves in comes out and it has one little ridge one little light divot going all the way around the handle down here and these high mountain whites are nice because this one, it's good for bowl lathering or face lathering. And, um, you know, it goes ahead and it just feels so smooth and soft and silky on the face. Um, it's one of my, it's probably my favorite brush. And with brushes, the object of the brush is to basically work up a lather in a bowl or load light or load soap into it and then work it onto your face and then as you're doing it it'll exfoliate your face and it will lift the hairs and surround them by lather to get them ready to be cut off and um and oh one thing about boar hair brushes is they can be what's called a lather hog 
where the head it kind of sucks the lather down into the knot and it doesn't release it back into the bristles so you might have to reload a time or two and you know if you got to reload just do it don't be afraid about that um, don't think ah oh, man I gotta get through it with this amount of lather anyway so that's natural hairbrushes now let's take a look at synthetics synthetics are a great option if you're a vegan because they are not made with animal hairs or if you don't want to worry about animal cruelty then um, like you know some people have an issue with badgers because quite honestly um, badgers are a nuisance nuisance in Asia which is where pretty much all your badger knots come from they're a nuisance in Asia and they're trapped because they are a nuisance and so so prolific over there and uh, in some places they unfortunately raise them on farms and but from what I understand there are some parts of the world that do consume badger meat so I'm sure that you know in many cases the animal is you know um, used for more than just its fur or for more than it's just its hair for brushes so anyways but if you're not down with badger brushes hey that's on you it's your hobby you know so I I'm, I'm I don't judge anyhow so and so first, when synthetics first came out, they were not great. Um, I've heard some people describe the old nylon bristle brushes as like trying to lather with fiber optics, with tiny fiber optics cables. Um, but this one is a purest USA nylon bristle brush. And this, was, this, this brush was popular with them back in the 60s. And it's more of a display piece. My girlfriend got it with my Old Spice mug for Christmas. The guy would not say, uh, oh, take the brush out and just sell the mug. But I'm glad I got this one. I've used it once, and it's not the greatest. Um, it's a little rough on the face, and, you know, you got to constantly dip it the tips in water. And it's just kind of a pain in the butt to use. But it was a neat experiment, and, you know, it's got a pretty decent backbone. And, you know... Um, not the worst experience I've ever had, but not the best. The next one, if you like the vintage look, you can get this one. This is a Razor Rock 400 synthetic brush. It says Razor Rock 400 here. Orange, my friend Christian says the, the handle looks like a, a Phillips screwdriver with a flat tip, and it does. And um, with it being so tall, it's great for getting down in deep lather bowls or deep soap tubs. And it's a synthetic knot, and as you can see, you know, it's pretty soft on the face. Um, it's pretty good, though. I like it. So if you want that vintage feel, and it was modeled after, from the 1930s, they had a brush called the Rubber Set 400. The next one is when synthetic brushes first start making a comeback. Um, some guy, some some companies tried making one to rival the Plusoft, which was out of France, and that was about eighty bucks to purchase and have it shipped here. There was a company here in the states called Loxiton. I think they're still around. Yeah, they're still around. But Loxiton, where they would get the knots and they would put them in their own handle, and then you could get them for around forty, fifty bucks. Um, but others tried to rival them, and the first ones wasn't quite up to the up to the challenge. Now I've never used a Plusoft, but a lot of people or a Plusan, but a lot of people will tell you this brush is quite not up to the challenge, and it's this one. It's a rubber, I mean not rubber set. It's a pure satin tip black fiber brush. This is a great travel brush. It doesn't. It's a little scratchy on the face, but not bad. Um, I like using it for a travel brush because I got a cardboard tube I can drop it in. And synthetics are a great travel option because they dry really fast. And the final brush I will show you is this one. This is the AP Shave Co. 24mm Tuxedo Knot put down into what he calls his Ruby Ripple Handle. You can find them on Etsy at apshaveco.com or at apshaveco. Just go to etsy.com and type in apshaveco. And you'll find it. 
And as you can see, well, if you can see, if you can't, I'll describe it the best I can. You have your ridge up here, the glue bump, which is like a knob, kind of knobby. Then you have one rib down, ridge down here, and then it curves in. It's very similar to the barber handle. And it's all acrylic, and it's got like sparkly, kind of, kind of rippling sparkly glittery stuff inside the handle and my girlfriend actually said she thought she saw a fish face in here but it is called a tuxedo knot because it's black down here and white up here and it's pretty soft on the face um i like the plus soft knot it, the plus soft barber handle brush i have a little bit better it's got a little bit better face feel but this is dang close this is extremely close, and it, but it's got a little more backbone than that plus off. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful brush. It's, it's, it's probably one of my two favorite, the plus off, and this one are my two favorite synthetics. So, anyways, for now. So, anyways, um, that's that. That's soaps and brushes. Let's see how long it took. You're going to hear my phone talk. Zero thirty-one. Stop recording oh, video. Zero thirty-one. Button. Yeah, a couple of minutes will be edited out of there. Sorry it took so long, guys, but you know what? I want to cover soaps and brushes together. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's soaps and brushes. I hope you all have a good one. Um, once again, welcome to Edward and the mystery mystery person or mystery subscriber. Y'all have a good one. Have some great shaves. Have some great. Uh, wonder. Hope y'all have wonderful mail calls need to contact me, just lance 59 at gmail.com. Um, all lowercase, no spaces, likes, comments, subscriptions, whack the bell. You know, you, you know the you know the spiel. You see it every time. Anyways, I hope y'all are doing well and I'll see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye bye now.